what a lively way to wake us up, just in time to talk about how to operate and correct um, and work on the cornea for the uh, correction of different refractive errors, specifically focusing on myopia and presbyopia correction, which truly are the holy grails of ophthalmology. So let's set the stage and discuss in background the prevalence of myopia and presbyopia. We look at myopia today, if there ever was a word for an epidemic, capitalized, underlined, it certainly is myopia. So the prevalence of it, uh, somewhere in the range of 2.7 billion myopes uh, globally, affecting just under 200 million in the US. But look at the rate of growth. In just a handful of years, myopia and those that are affected uh, from it will have grown another billion worldwide. And there are various contributing factors, improved education, a lot more near work, less sunlight, less time time outside, and so much time that is spent doing and performing near-related activities. And looking into the literature, the prevalence of it, the trends from now to 30 years from now is pretty startling to notice that it's going to be five times more, five billion myopes um, that will happen in the next three decades. In terms of different uh, corrective options for myopia. Surgically, we know how to correct myopia with uh, laser refractive surgery, but as it relates to controlling it, there's very little that has been available uh, from topical therapeutic options. A lot of interest in low-dose atropine. There are at least 15 different unsponsored studies when you look at clinical trials. There are three different companies specifically focusing on low-dose atropine uh, to treat and prevent prevent further progression of myopia in children. And it certainly is daunting to think that myopia affects upwards of 80 to 90% of those who live in China and about th a third of those in the US. So presbyopia, again, yet another very ubiquitous refractive error affecting 2 billion uh, worldwide. And as you can see, there are about 2 million more presbyopes annually if you look between now and a handful of years from now. And again, various different factors, including a greater aging population, longer life expectancies, again, uh, so many more who are in the growing middle class in emerging markets, as well as an increased near uh, vision needs that are occurring. And but what's on the flip side of that is that there's been very little innovation in the treatment of presbyopia. So in the 1200s, reading glasses. 250 years ago, Benjamin Franklin uh, created the bifocal. And in 250 years, really not a whole lot of conservative options to manage presbyopia. So let's discuss what topical options are in the pipeline. Between the four different companies that are working on it, we have Novartis which is actually trying to prevent, with EVO6, the stiffening of the lens. There are various companies, including Liquid Vision through Presbyopia Therapies and Oasis, as well as Allergan, that are actually focusing on pupillary meiosis to help with that pseudo-accommodation. And some of the companies also have a secondary agent to mitigate some of the accommodative spasm, whether it's tropicamide or an NSAID that is used alongside. With IOL Technologies, we've already heard about it. It's booming. There's there's a lot more options, OUS, and a lot more options to come. A couple that are very interesting that are being in trialed in the US that were not discussed in the last section include the AccuFocus IC8 lens. And as a small aperture IOL, this is a great option to mitigate the effects of astigmatism, as well as those with aberrated corneas, to provide a satisfactory level, if not an excellent level, of range of vision, as well as we talked about the effects of effect lens position. So what about an accommodative IOL that avoids the variability of the capsular bag implantation with a sulcus blade uh, based accommodative IOL option uh, that is in trials with foresight? With that being said, there is a lot to look forward to. About a handful of years ago, not so many options. From the perspective of lens-based and corneal in the next generation, over 30 various options. And so with that being said, I am very fortunate to be able to introduce Bill Wiley and then Raj Rajpal, Dr. Killick, and Dr. Vukic to talk about different corneal-based surgical approaches to the treatment of myopia and presbyopia. Music